Good afternoon everyone. Today in this episode, I will start by asking you a simple question. Is it possible to get rid of pain by fixing your diet? It might seem a bit far-fetched off, but it's actually very practical and workable to get rid of whichever pain you have been experiencing, whether it's for many years or a few years or just a few months, by altering how you have been eating your food. You might be have been consuming the wrong food or having very serious nutrient deficiencies. So today in this episode, I'll be guiding you on that. And this can be help you to able, be able to remove whether it's backaches, whether it's uh, leg pain, shoulder pains, or even headaches. So this is the first thing, drop the sugar. And there are various ways in which sugar causes you to experience pain. One, sugar reduces the bioavailability of vitamin C. Now, vitamin C is very much required by your muscles to be able to form connective tissues. There are people who I know, if they walk for long distances, they will all of a sudden start experiencing severe joint pain, severe muscle pains. It's as if the world has ended on them. And this is usually because they are consuming lots of sugar, which is causing them to be very deficient in vitamin C. So whenever they are doing any form of exercise, their connective tissues are very much broken down, but there is not enough vitamin C in the diet to rebuild them back. So they experience a lot of muscle pains and joint pains, especially after doing workouts. Secondly, is that sugar causes a deficiency in vitamin B1. Vitamin B1 is the communicative neuron, let me not, not say neuron, but the communicative nutrient between your neurons and your muscles. If there is no communication link between your nerves and muscles, there becomes a breakdown in that sequence of communication. A breakdown will always manifest as pain. And most of the time it can manifest as shoulder pains, leg pains, sometimes even on your upper limbs, that's your hands, a lot of pain on them. It can even be tingling on your fingers, burning feet. And this is because you are becoming very deficient in vitamin B1 because you are consuming lots of sugar. Thirdly, sugar causes dehydration. Now, when you are dehydrated, there's one part of your body that becomes damaged. That is the kidneys. The kidneys are, when there is inflammation happening there, you'll find that there's a lot of back pain, a lot of back aches, especially the lower back. And this is because when there's dehydration happening because you're consuming too much sugar, your blood becomes very thick like porridge and your kidneys cannot filter blood that looks like porridge. They need blood that actually is very much hydrated and looks like a bit of milk, something that you can easily filter. But if it's very thick like porridge, you end up with inflamed kidneys, which will always manifest as back pains. So to be able to fix it, you have to drop the sugar and when i mean drop the sugar this is what i mean you have to drop the table sugar that you've been adding to your tea the honey the jaggery sweets ice cream jam soda fruit juices energy drinks yogurts alcohol breakfast cereals that is weetabix cornflakes oatmeal especially if you are an addict of them all wheat products it doesn't matter whether they are written it's brown all of them anything that comes as packaged maize flour and packaged porridge flour it might seem a bit too restrictive but as long as these foods are in your diet even the packaged maize flour the packaged porridge flour the best way to take maize flour or porridge flour is just go to a portion meal and ground it Others, if you are still taking the packaged one, the pain will not still go away. So if those are still in your diet, you'll still experience pain, whether it's back aches, shoulder pains, leg pain, and even headaches. Number two, consume citrus fruits. So citrus fruits have two things within them. Number one, they have plenty of vitamin C. As I told you, if there's no vitamin C in your body, you'll have a problem forming connective tissues, especially after an exercise. So 
what you do ensure probably you have done some workouts once you do a workout you can take a, some a bit of four to five oranges five oranges is a good number to be able to get adequate levels of vitamin c to be able to alleviate any joint pain or muscle pain you might be feeling the relief would come a bit next day in the morning when you wake up it will not be instantly because the connective tissues are not something that are formed immediately they require time for formation especially during sleep so when you sleep overnight you wake up in the morning feeling very well especially if you have walked for some distance and you're all of a sudden feeling a lot of joint pains that might become a relief for you you can also opt for lemons tangerines but prefer Personally, I prefer oranges because they are more available and uh, it's not something that I would struggle with consuming. The other advantage of citrus fruits is that they contain something called citric acid. So citric acid is very good in preventing gout attacks. So citric acid by itself, it helps in dissolving uric acid. That is the main critical component that leads to formation of gout attacks. So you can be doing lemon water daily as a preventive mechanism to prevent occurrence of this. Number three is consuming pork. Uh, pork is very rich in something we call vitamin B1. So vitamin B1 is what you need in order to be able to form communication between your nerves and your muscles. So if you can be consuming pork maybe once a week, twice a week, you can be able to alleviate specifically leg pains that are like which manifest maybe as restless leg syndrome or even shoulder pains that can be happening either on your right or your left side so vitamin b1 you can get it from pork you can also get it from liver beef liver if you if you feel that pork is a bit too much for you you can do beef liver or even meat itself though pork is the best alternative number four is eating salt Salt is very important for your muscles because if there's no salt, one thing you end up with is very weak muscles. You end up being, feeling fatigued and sometimes you might even pass out. And most of the time people think that you are having low blood sugar levels. Though this is not usually the case, the case is that you are very deficient in salt. So if you are very deficient in salt, one thing you can do is consume about three glasses of salted water. You will experience relief after about 15 minutes. Yeah, about 15 minutes is the time range you can feel a bit relieved from that kind of pain. And uh, sometimes this pain can be coupled with a headache. So you are having muscle pain coupled with a headache. So that might come in as a good relief. The fifth thing you're supposed to do is drink adequate amounts of water. So water as I told you, if there's no water in your body, your blood becomes thick like porridge. And the kidneys cannot filter blood that is very thick as porridge. They only cause more inflammation. More inflammation will result in a lot of back aches. You are experiencing terrible nights because you cannot lie on your back. So drink sufficient amounts of water. If you're someone who practices fasting, don't do fasting without drinking water. That will only mean more damage to your kidneys and you'll experience very severe backaches so you 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 better do just fasting with water uh to add more to it especially on fasting if you have to or is a must for you to drink for, is a must for you to do the fast without water don't do a fast more than 24 hours without water i'm saying this because there are people who engage in religious activities and they prefer doing a fast without water so don't do it more than 24 hours but the best strategy is to ensure that you're always drinking water even when fasting another thing is that when there's no water or there's less water in the body you also form uric acid crystals that lead to gout have you ever asked yourself why don't birds pee like human beings or like other animals it's because birds drink a very little amount of water as compared to other mammals whether it's a human being whether it's a cow or a goat or even a rat cows i mean birds drink lesser water as compared proportional to their body size because they want to prevent a lot of weight whenever they are flying so it's a strategy or a survival mechanism to enhance them flying 
So what's the end product? They will always remove their waste as uric acid because there's no much sufficient water to be able to form urine. So that's the same thing that happens in the body. When there's not enough water in the body, there is a, the resultant effect is formation of uric acid crystals that will manifest as gout, whether it's in your feet, whether it's in your hands, or even your joints. So those are the five strategies to be able to get rid of pain. Drop the sugar, that's the first thing. Uh, consume citrus fruits, consume pork. If you find pork is too hard for you, you can opt for liver or beef. Uh, also, you can consume, I mean, that is eat salt. And number five, drink adequate amount of water. So thank you for watching this video and see you next time.